Thanks for the comment. Raise your hands. Keep them up for me for a second. Good. So well, it's definitely good to get back to work um, out there today. It's a great opportunity for a lot of players on our team to learn, grow, and improve uh, with the, these practices that we have for this game. Um, you know, but the same message is um, you know, pay attention to detail, focus on doing the little things right. It seems like every time we don't have success in a game, those are the points that we have to emphasize and show the players. So. Uh, these are habits that you want to definitely practice every day uh, so that your focus is what it needs to be so that you can pay attention to detail and play with great discipline. I think everybody's got to refocus their mindset, you know, on playing uh, in this game. Um, you know, we're playing a very good team in Michigan, and I'm sure that they have their reasons for having their motivation to try to vindicate, you know, some of the things that happened in their season. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, we have a lot of reasons to, you know, want to play well uh, to, you know, sort of indicate some of the disappointments that we've had in our season. Uh, I think, you know, team success uh, goes a long way in elevating individuals uh, and individual performance gets noticed when teams have success. And I think, you know, every player needs to know that he can create value for himself by playing well in this game, whether it's his future at Alabama or his future uh, because this is the last time he'll play here. Uh, but, um, you know, I'd like to congratulate, um, you know, 15 guys that graduated uh, on Saturday, which brings the 23 guys, you know, uh, that have graduated in this class. You know, to this point, we've had 150 graduates in the last six years, which is, you know, I think, you know, something that ranks very high nationally. Uh, in terms of guys finishing their degree in three and a half years or better. Um, we have two players who have made the choice not to play in the game, um, Terrell Lewis and Trayvon Diggs. Um, and, you know, every guy's got a choice and decision to make. Uh, and we certainly respect and understand their decision and uh, wish them well in what they choose to do. Uh, DJ Dale has not responded, you know, very well um, to treatment and medications to you know, try to get him uh, in a position um, where he might be able to play in this game. So uh, he is doubtful, and we're going to you know, explore other protocols to try to uh, get him better. Chris, we'll start back with Charlie. Just a couple more injury updates. And we saw Miller, we saw Trey Sanders in practice today. Just how close are those guys to beat him to play the game? Well, uh, I think Miller Forrestal probably has a good chance to be able to come back and play in the game. This depends on how he responds to the activity uh, and the contact. Um, you know, Trey Sanders is, you know, been cleared to do uh, on the field work, uh, but we do not feel that he's probably a guy that's going to be ready to play in the game. Um, so, Chris, you're in the middle of Michael. You mentioned how that the importance of responding to this game and refocusing. What have you seen from the focus of this team entering a game in a rare moment here for a game that's not in a playoff or a championship contention? Well, I think what the players need to understand, and I can't tell you because it's today's the first day I've seen them for two weeks because I've been recruiting every day. Um, but the attitude was good today. The energy was good today. Um, but. I, I can't tell you. I can just tell you the last two times that we've been in this situation, whether it was to play Utah or to play Oklahoma, uh, the other team sure had more to prove in the game than we did, uh, and the results certainly showed it. So hopefully we can learn something from those experiences as well. Back to Cecil. Coach, will you have any, um, depending on what happens Wednesday, any early entry players will be eligible to practice? I don't understand the question, nor can I hear the question. Um, any early injuries, freshmen will come in who will participate in bowl practice? Uh, we may have someone later in the week, but um, you know, until they sign on Wednesday, I guess we won't have any comments on that. Okay, Coach, we've got Tony here, and unless there's a follow-up, that'll be it. Well, what have you seen from your, the leaders on your team and how have they responded to this bowl game and just the, the overall feel of the team heading. Well, today's the first day I've seen them. But uh, has there been any kind of like 
even in the aftermath of the Iron Bowl? Have you seen well, I don't think anybody's happy with the Iron Bowl. I think everybody's really disappointed. Um, and, um, you know, the only way that, you know, it's, a, it's okay to be disappointed. Um, but I think I believe in the team. I believe in the players. I believe in the leadership on the team. Uh, I believe this team has had a lot to overcome. Uh, and it's, it continues to grow um, with what they've had to overcome. And uh, we're going to coach the guys that want to play in the game and have a great attitude about playing in the game, and that's who we're going to play in the game. So, and we're going to do the best we can with all those guys. Follow up here with Michael. Just wonder, what was your advice to the guys when they came to you and talked to you about the decision to make, whether to play in the game or not? Um, well, look, I, I try to get guys to make business decisions about what they're going to do. And, uh, you know, I kind of get it if you're a high first-round draft pick. Um, you know, the, the, the money versus how you can protect yourself and insure yourself, you know, may um, make a business decision that says the risk is not worth the reward of playing in the game. Uh, but if you're not in that position, uh, then you have an opportunity to showcase your talents uh, and try to impress people uh, with, you know, how you play in the game. And uh, that's pretty much what I told, you know, those guys, and it's, you know, their choice. Uh, so, you know, and everybody has to live with sort of the consequences of their decisions, whether they're good decisions or bad decisions. Coach, we'll finish up last one with Cecil. Uh, Coach, just to follow up on that, you had some guys who were in that position you just described who, who have elected to play. And could you just comment on on what some of their motivations were as, as far as the team is concerned? Well, I haven't talked to those guys, but uh, I, I really uh, I, I got draft grades from 20 different teams, and you know, uh, if you guys pick guys, do you, do you guys actually pick guys in the draft? Does the media pick guys? Do the guys that put the, the mock drafts up, do you guys actually have a draft choice? Do you pick? The people that pick, uh, I'm not sure we do have anybody in that position. All right, so um, Pop, you know, I know it's, you know, out there. It's out there every year. You know, we've had guys that they put, we are going to get drafted in the first round and got drafted in the fifth round. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think all that information is exactly accurate. I actually think that the NFL teams try to steer the media away from who they're going to pick and who they like. All right, so there's a lot of misinformation out there as to uh, who the guys are. I'm excited about the guys that are playing in the game, the guys that have decided to play in the game, and I think all the guys that are playing in the game have made really good choices to play in the game, and I think they can enhance their value by playing in the game uh, very, very well. So, um, and every guy's got to make that decision, and we support them. You know, whatever that decision is. All right, coach, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you.